changed everything. And I made no secret of my dislike of Microsoft over many years. I, I did think that analogy of a, of a building site, uh, of, of a 60s grey office, which is essentially what um, the environments they were making then were. And, and I think, whatever I may think of this device, and I'm going to come to that in a moment, I think we can all admire the humility with which Microsoft have admitted to the fact that they, they now, I think, get it. They get the fact that all human beings, whether they work in enterprise or in small businesses or are self-employed, are human beings first. You don't, you don't judge the machines you use or the houses you live in or the offices where you work simply by listing their functions. The first thing you do as a human being, whether or not you work for a large business or a small one, is say how you feel about it. What do you feel about your office? Does it make you feel good? When people buy a house, yes, of course they need the right number of bathrooms. Of course they want that amount of acreage. But essentially they make the choice on feeling. And what I always was excited by when Apple produced things and then when HTC and other OEMs started making fascinating and, and enjoyable uh, Androids, and even when RIM came out with the torch, I, 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 I felt pleasure using them. Because these are like things, they, we carry them around with us at all times and our lives flow through and out of them. And the first feeling we should have is one of delight. So when I heard Mr. Bolton use the word delight, I thought, oh, what joy there is in heaven when a sinner repented. Because, <laughs> let's be frank, Microsoft were grey, they were featureless. They did concentrate so much on enterprise and tick boxes for function that they forgot that even the greatest number cruncher in the corporation is a human being first, a father, a husband, a mother, a daughter, whatever. And, and that their experiences are based on feeling and on emotion. So when they did send me one of these about a week or so ago, um, I've got a few of them. Um, <laughs> I'm going to have to give this, I mean, only one of them I'm allowed to keep, apparently, which is really sad. But as I say, I'm not being paid. Um, my first feeling was that it was just fun to play with. And I know that's childish, but isn't that how you think of cars and many other of the things we spend our lives doing? Is it fun to drive? Yes, you want it to be economical. Yes, you want it to get you from A to B properly. Yes, you want various things. You know that story about the Volkswagen bug when they, when they sort of reinvented the Beetle? And the engineers who'd come up with these astonishing ergonomic designs and engine governance and maintenance systems were devastated to hear that one of the primary reasons people bought it was because they liked the flower bud vase that was built on the dashboard. They thought, what, what? But they shouldn't have mocked people for saying, I want this car because it's got a flower bud vase. They should recognize that people buy things because they feel that emotional engagement. They feel the pleasure of using it. And I have felt enormous pleasure using this phone. Yes, I'm, because I'm not a paid spokesman and because I'm not any kind of spokesman for Microsoft, I can say it has its deficiencies. But then that was the thing about the iPhone that everybody fell on. People who had Windows Mobile 5, as it then was, 6 was just coming out, they laughed to scorn the iPhone when it arrived because it didn't have all these functions. But if you remember the tedious horror of drilling down through the menus just to get a wireless connection, on an old, um, on an old wind mob phone, you will understand that it wasn't about that. The people, people embraced the iPhone because it was simple, it was closed, it was clear. Now, the closed environment is something you're all going to be speaking about, the ecosystem. You're all going to be speaking about how it positions itself against RIM and how it positions itself, obviously, crucially, against the iPhone and, uh, and the Android. Um, and that's a decision that only the market and the next year can, can make. You can all guess, we can all